Exterior insulation is one of the single best things that you can invest in if you're building in a cold climate. Apart from the benefits of thermal comfort and energy efficiency, rigid exterior insulation significantly improves the durability of our walls by preventing condensation that can lead to mold and rot problems, keeping our framing closer to interior conditions. In this video, we're talking about how to integrate exterior rigid insulation with rock wool. Let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna walk through this wall assembly here. We have a wall that's been insulated on the exterior with two layers of a rigid rock wool product called Comfort Board, and this exterior insulation provides a complete thermal break between the frame structure and the exterior environment, keeping the sheathing and the studs at a very stable temperature. It prevents condensation on the backside of the sheathing, and it's the most energy efficient and durable way that we can build our walls. Now, it's important to note that this rigid insulation is installed over the weather-resistive barrier, not under underneath. Here we're calling out a self-adhered weather-resistive barrier, and this not only serves as a really robust water control layer, but it also serves as a highly effective air control layer as well, because that weather barrier is bonded to the exterior sheathing, which means that air can't flow underneath and between the weather barrier and the sheathing, unlike a house wrap which will allow air and water to travel freely between the sheathing if it happens to get behind there, which it usually does. So having this combination of a self-adhered or fluid-applied weather-resistive barrier and this rigid insulation installed outboard provides a really durable and energy efficient wall assembly that will last quite a long time since it's keeping the structure and those moisture sensitive components closer to interior conditions throughout the service life of the building. Could we use EPS foam or polyisocyanurate instead of rock wool? Absolutely, but we have to make sure that we're providing a small drainage gap between the weather resistive barrier and the rigid insulation. Rock wool comfort board has a textured surface and so water is able to drain behind it quite easily, but EPS foam and other rigid insulation products products that are foam based tend to be smooth and uniform and water can get trapped behind there and held in tension. So we want to either use a textured drainable self-adhered weather resistive barrier like HydroGap SA or Typar drainable peel and stick, a grooved rigid insulation product, or we want to install a thin drainage mesh behind there. We really don't need that much space for drainage to occur. A 16th of an inch works pretty well, an eighth inch works even better. We really don't want to go higher than an eighth of an inch gap here because we start to get an energy penalty and we start to lose some effective thermal resistance. Now, these rigid insulation layers are fastened to the wall assembly with insulation screws or nails with these polypropylene plastic washers. And these washers are designed to reduce compression on the rigid insulation at the location of the fasteners and it help to actually keep them in place since the washer is keeping the head of the screw from passing through the rigid insulation board. Then we install vertical one x four furring strips over the rigid insulation layers with a one and a quarter inch minimum embedment into the studs, one and a half inches is even better, and that will secure the furring strips to the wall so we can actually attach our horizontal cladding. So we're fastening the rigid insulation to the sheathing, we're fastening the furring strips to the studs through the rigid insulation, the cladding is fastened to the furring strips, and the furring strips transfer the loads of the cladding to the structure. So that's how the system works. We can also use a vertical cladding, but we need an additional layer of horizontal furring strips in order to fasten the vertical boards and to ensure that we've maintained a ventilated drainage space. For our sheathing, we're calling out a 5 eighths of an inch CDX plywood sheathing, but we could just as well use OSB instead. We could use a gypsum sheathing if we wanted even greater fire resistance in the assembly. And then we're filling the rest of the stud cavities with Rockwool's R23 Comfort Bat, which will fit into a five and a half inch stud cavity. So this places the total R value of the wall assembly at around R39, which is more or less an R21.5 effective R value. So what do I mean by effective R value? Well, every time we run into a wood stud or a framing component, that's a potential thermal bridge. Wood has a thermal resistance of R1 per inch, making it more conductive than the insulation in the cavity. So at all the studs, the actual R value of the wall assembly is R21.5, not R39, since it's solid wood at those locations, not insulation. Given it's not that much since this is only at stud and framing locations, but it reduces the overall efficiency of the wall assembly. So it's not a true R39 wall, but either way, this continuous rigid insulation makes a huge difference in terms of thermal performance by providing a thermal break. If you have an R16 thermal break on the exterior of your wall assembly, you're doing pretty well. So we're filling the stud cavities with our rock wool bats. This also provides some additional fire protection to the assembly since fire can't travel up within this space as rock wool is non-combustible and is an approved fire blocking material. And then we can install our standard gypsum board over that for our interior finish material. Now there are some details that we need to talk about. At the base of the wall, we want to flash the connection at the stem wall to the framing 
and weather-resistive barrier with a fluid-applied flashing or a compatible flashing tape to prevent air leakage and bugs as well as water from getting inside. And so a fluid-applied flashing like an STPE product is going to be able to bridge that transition quite well since it can adhere to concrete. We also want to install a metal base flashing or Z flashing with a drip edge to kick any water away from the wall that happens to drip behind the rigid insulation. And we want to tape that or flash that to the weather-resistive barrier so that water doesn't drain behind the metal flashing. We want that water to be directed over the metal flashing, and so we want to use either a pressure-sensitive adhesive tape or a fluid-applied flashing at this location to bridge that connection properly. We also want to wrap a bug screen mesh underneath the rigid insulation layers and up and over the vertical wood furring strips to prevent bugs from getting in here. Now, rock wool is quite resistant to bugs burrowing into the insulation since rock wool tends to shred their exoskeletons. However, we still don't want bugs getting into this space or behind this space and potentially causing problems. If we're using rigid foam on the exterior instead of rock wool, we absolutely must have this bug screen here because ants and termites love to burrow into foam, especially wet foam. They make a home out of it and you eventually eventually end up with an ant or termite problem since they'll eventually make their way inside. We don't want that, we want to make sure that our rigid insulation stays nice and durable for the lifespan of the structure. So installing this bug screen actually is a really big deal. Again, we want this bug screen to be a mesh-like material so that water can still drain out behind the cladding and to ensure continuous airflow. We staple the bug screen mesh to the furring strips and to the exterior wall, and then we're set. We also want to install the rigid insulation layers in an orientation with staggered and offset joints to improve the thermal resistance at the seams of each rigid insulation board. This ensures that the framing is adequately insulated, and it will prevent colder temperatures from reaching the sheathing at those gaps. Now, the amount of rigid insulation that you need on the outside of your wall assembly is dependent on your climate zone, the type of rigid insulation that you're specifying, and the performance goals of your home. I see rigid insulation primarily as a tool to prevent condensation on the back side of the sheathing and a means to improve durability. A bonus to this is that it significantly improves the thermal performance of the wall assembly and improves the energy efficiency of the home. However, the warmer the climate that you're building in, the less rigid insulation that you'll necessarily need to prevent condensation. That's not to say that you wouldn't want rigid insulation on the outside of your walls to improve the efficiency of the air conditioning systems and to prevent heat gain, but you don't actually need it to prevent condensation. In colder climates, you absolutely need rigid insulation to prevent condensation, or a smart vapor retarder membrane, or some type of vapor throttle in the assembly to slow the movement of vapor so that it doesn't condense on the backside of the sheathing. We want our wall assemblies to be moisture safe and durable, and installing rigid insulation outboard is one of the best things that you can invest in after a rain screen. If you're looking for high-performance wall details like these, pick up my CAD details for my energy-efficient, high-performance wall assemblies. These details include the wall assembly shown here, as well as comprehensive window assembly information that illustrates how to incorporate rigid insulation at the sill, jams, and window heads at six different wall types, including assemblies with rock wool, wood fiber, zip R insulated sheathing, EPS foam, and more. The details are only available at asiri-designs.com shop. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.